The race for military dominance has accelerated as global tensions continue to rise uncontrollably. In order to stay ahead of potential threats, the United States, a leader in technological innovation, is advancing its military capabilities, including the development of powerful laser systems. These technologies aim to secure strategic superiority, but their impact on global stability remains uncertain. What makes this laser system stand out from amongst the rest? And how does it give the United States the edge over its rivals? Join us as we delve into the devastating capabilities of the U.S. new laser system. The battle for dominance is a never-ending battle, with each country seemingly trying to gain the edge over the other. The United States has finally fit the final piece of the puzzle, and this has pulled ahead of its rivals. In the year 22, the United States once again turned to a familiar face in Lockheed Martin for the development and deployment of a high-powered laser system named the High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler, Helios. Helios is technology unlike anything ever seen before. This new technology had power unlike any other before it, as the company rated it more than 60 kilowatts, and it had a range on it. It could hit targets over five miles away. This laser system also leaves room for improvement, as there are possibilities of it firing over 100 and 150 kilowatts in the near future. The technology, Helios, is being installed on a USS Preble, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer. The United States Secretary of Navy, Carlos del Toro, when asked questions by the U.S. Congress, confirmed that there are plans in place to fast-track the development of the Helios laser program. He also confirmed that there are about six other laser programs in place, which he could not speak of openly for the sake of confidentiality. Rick Cordero, the vice president of Lockheed Martin, revealed that the United States and Lockheed Martin share a vision and enthusiasm for developing laser systems. Cordaro laid emphasis on how Helios helps to bolster the combat system effectiveness of the ship to help prevent future threats. Not just that, it also provides the extra layer of protection needed by the sailors as they navigate their way through treacherous waters. Helios has outdone its predecessor, the an seq 3 In 24, the United States Navy unveiled its Austin-class amphibious transport dock, USS Ponce, with the an CQ-3 laser weapon system, LAY-US. The an seq 3 was capable of firing 30 kilowatts. It was developed to target low-level threats like small boats. It had a few shortcomings of its own. It found it very difficult to target small objects like tiny drones. But the an seq 3 was still a game-changer in its own right. They converted the electrical energy from the ship into a focused beam of light that could be targeted at critical parts of an object, such as the engines or sensors, to incapacitate or destroy it. The damage caused by laws was not just limited to that, as they also caused structural damage or detonated explosive materials on board the target by delivering a large amount of heat. Unlike other traditional weapons that rely only on impact, laws employ directed energy to burn through parts of the target. Laws also added another important feature to its assets, versatility. Its operators were able to adjust its power levels. Its output can be reduced to operate at lower intensities to simply neutralize and disable sensors. And its output can be increased to higher intensities to destroy threats. The LAWS system tracks down its targets through optical systems and can engage them over several kilometers with precision, providing a more suitable solution for defending against several threats. In 2010, the United States awarded Kratos Defense and Security Solutions an $11 million contract to help support the Naval Surface Warfare Center in the development of a laser weapon that could be utilized by the United States Navy. Thus, LAWS was born. LAWS is integrated with the ship's radar and fire control systems, and it operates at the speed of light, ensuring rapid response to any kind of emerging threat. Its precision in hitting the target minimizes collateral damage and makes it well-suited for complex and populated environments. The importance of Helios cannot be understated, as the changing landscape of wars in this 21st century makes it a necessity. One of the most impactful technologies to shape the battlefield in the 21st century is the drone. These unmanned aerial vehicles have redefined the very way wars are fought. The introduction of drones has made operations more efficient and cost significantly less, allowing militaries to strike with more pinpoint accuracy and maintain a constant presence over the battlefield. 
As the years go by, the influence of drones continues to expand beyond the activities of state actors. The technology has been adopted by non-state actors and has been highly influential for them. The adoption of this technology by non-state actors has seen it leveraging the playing field in conflicts around the world. The influence of drones is not limited to just one domain of warfare, as it cuts across all domains of warfare. Loitering munitions, or kamikaze drones as they are called, have successfully disrupted some traditional force structures by making available smaller, more agile units with the power to strike high-value targets such as tanks, artillery, and command centers. Meanwhile, underwater drones and ground robots are ensuring and expanding the reach and influence of unmanned warfare to new environments, further cementing their role in the future of conflict. Conflicts that involve drones in areas such as the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden, and the Bab al-Mandeb Strait are wreaking havoc on the United States, not just military-wise, but also economic-wise. The United States Department of Defense in late 23 reported that United States Navy destroyers successfully shot down nearly 40 drones and several missiles in the Red Sea. The Navy has succeeded in stopping uncrewed air and sea vehicles, and this is a huge bonus to the country. This is where Helios becomes very important. Helios, as its name indicates, is a multi-purpose system. It is powerful enough to deal critical damage or destroy certain target sets, such as smaller drones and boats. In this way, the system can also act as a dazzle to blind or confuse the optical sensors on enemy ships and also aircraft and optical seekers on any incoming missile and other munitions. When used in this way, Helios can potentially throw off any incoming weapon or limit an opponent's general situational awareness, including surveillance capabilities. Helios also has its own optical sensors, which are primarily used to spot, track, and cue the laser, but that can also be used in a secondary surveillance role. The United States did not limit its laser technology to just the Navy and has tried to apply it to the Air Force as well, but did not enjoy the same level of success it did with Helios. The United States Air Force's vaunted self-protect high-energy laser demonstrator, SHIELD program, was closed out without ever achieving its goal of testing a laser-directed energy weapon on a fighter. The roots of SHIELD can be traced back to at least the early 2010s and were publicly focused on the development of a laser-directed energy weapon that crewed combat jets like the F-15 or F-16 could carry. The system's primary purpose would have been to help ensure the protection of those aircraft from incoming air-to-air -air and surface-to-air missiles. Documents obtained in 2022 via the Freedom of Information Act revealed a link between SHIELD's origins and interest in a more multi-purpose laser weapon to arm a notional sixth-generation stealthy crewed combat jet envisioned in a study that preceded the Air Force's current next-generation air dominance NGAD, effort. The Air Force had hoped that by 2017, they would have been able to load a complete shield system onto a fighter for an initial flight sometime in 21. Things did not go according to plan, and by 2020, that timeline had expanded to 25. Shield is not the first high-profile laser weapon program the Air Force has revealed that it has spun down just this year. In March, the Air Force confirmed to the war zone it had canceled its long-standing but also much-delayed plans to test a high-energy laser weapon on an AC-130J Ghost Rider gunship under its airborne high-energy laser AHEL program. The Air Force could only cite unspecified technical challenges as the reason why. The service added that, as a result, the program had to turn its attention to on-ground testing to improve operations and reliability to posture for a successful handoff for use by other agencies. It remains unknown who those other agencies might be. Doug Bush, Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology, also gave a less remarkable report on the results so far of Army field testing of laser arm strikers, also known as Directed Energy Maneuver Short-Range Air Defense. The United States Army is not just reliant on laser technology to keep its soldiers safe, but has also deployed a directed energy system of its own, aimed at keeping soldiers safe from drones and other threats. The laser used in the system has a 50 kilowatt power rating and is designed primarily to destroy smaller drones, as well as incoming threats such as artillery rockets, shells, and mortar projectiles. The Army is known to have received four prototypes and to have sent them all to undisclosed locations in the Middle East as of March, 
according to Breaking Defense. According to Bush, the most challenging part of it is with directed energy at different power levels. The intended 50 kilowatt power level is proving to be quite the challenge to incorporate into a vehicle that has to move around constantly, taking into account the heat dissipation, the amount of electronics, and the kind of wear and tear of a vehicle in a tactical environment versus a fixed site. It is not uncommon to experience hitches along the road, especially when testing weapons in a real-world environment. Laser-directed energy weapons especially look to have been having a particularly rough time in recent years. Despite the level of technological and material advancement that brought them out of the realm of science and made them more practical than ever. Separately in 2020, under the then Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, Mike Griffin raised somewhat similar issues while pouring cold water on the Missile Defense Agency, MDA, aiming to demonstrate the feasibility of using a drone armed with a laser weapon to shoot down enemy ballistic missiles during the initial boost phases of their flights. According to Griffith, using a weapon system to equip an airplane with the lasers that they think necessary in terms of their power level and getting them to altitudes where atmospheric troubles can be limited appropriately. Such a combination cannot go on one platform. Griffin said while speaking at the Washington Space Business Roundtable that he was extremely skeptical that the United States Air Force can put a large laser on an aircraft and use it to shoot down an adversary missile even from very close. This makes the success of the Helios all the more impressive. The United States is, however, not the only country that is investing in the development of a laser system. Other superpowers in the world are also engaged in the race of developing an efficient and powerful laser system. China is one of those superpowers. China has developed its own laser defense system, and although not as powerful as that of the United States, is powerful enough in its own rights. The Chinese Silent Hunter makes use of an electrically powered fiber optic laser and has a maximum power that ranges between 30 and 100 kilowatts. It also has a wide range on it, but not as much as the Helios. The Silent Hunter has a maximum range of four kilometers. The primary use of the Silent Hunter is to track and destroy low-flying drones. It is powerful enough to penetrate millimeter steel plates. However, the size of the Silent Hunter prevents its use on an aerial platform. But that is not all from China. Just like their counterparts, the United States, the Chinese also feel the need to continually improve their laser system, and they have made some breakthroughs. Chinese scientists are jubilant as they claim to have made a breakthrough in a real-life Death Star energy beam weapon. The new high-powered microwave weapon combines many small electromagnetic waves to make one large focused laser beam. Much like the Death Star from Star Wars, which destroyed planets by firing a particle beam composed of several smaller sources. The breakthrough they experienced is in the process of ultra-high time precision synchronization, which permits the beams from joining together and focusing on a single location. This idea has been considered difficult, if not impossible, to bring to life, as electromagnetic waves from different platforms need to arrive at the same location at the same time and in the same form to achieve an effective power combination. There are difficulties in bringing this to fruition. According to the research team's calculations, this requires each microwave vehicle to be in near-perfect position, with any positional error reduced to mere millimeters. Aside from that, the timing must also be perfect. The time synchronization error between them cannot exceed a trillionth of a second, which is more precise than the atomic clocks on GPS satellites. The technology was developed by the Jian Navigation Technology Research Institute under the China Electronics Technology Group Corporation. The group is a major supplier of electronic warfare weapons for the People's Liberation Army. Currently, it supplies most of the energy weapons used in the military. Due to the limitations in maximum power output, these weapons have not formed effective combat capabilities. But China believes it has what it takes to finally pull ahead of the United States. Submarine-powered laser systems. The approach would involve submarines using laser propellers to travel at incredible speeds, with the lasers creating tiny explosions that would propel the submarine forward at previously unheard of speeds. While the technology is theoretically possible, it does suffer from a potentially fatal flaw that would make any submarine using it even more vulnerable to detection than ever before. A Hong Kong-based newspaper first brought the new technology to light in April 24. The process involves using the lasers to serve as a form of underwater propulsion to not only achieve stealth,
but also super high underwater speeds that could potentially rival jet aircraft. This is not the first time lasers would be used as a form of propulsion. The use of lasers as a form of propulsion dates as far back as 1972, when it was originally proposed as a method for powering spacecraft. In atmospheric travel, the technology is fairly straightforward and understood as opposed to underwater. Atmospheric laser propulsion has only been tested with scale models under controlled conditions and has not resulted so far in an actual manned craft. The Chinese defense chiefs are planning to install a Star Wars type laser on its nuclear submarines so that it will be able to shoot down British and US spy satellites while hidden beneath the ocean. Chinese scientists make the bold claim that the weapon will be able to knock out satellites and enemy aircraft in a fraction of a second because lasers destroy targets at the speed of light. The Chinese have set their sights on one of the Western satellite systems, the SpaceX Starlink satellite system, which can often be seen passing over the skies in the UK. Details of these grand plans have been published in the Chinese defense magazine, Command Control and Simulation. According to the researchers in the article, the laser could be mounted on a mast and could fire at satellites while submerged. The article notes that a submarine with a megawatt class solid state laser weapon installed in its midsection could stay submerged while it raised a retractable mass to fire at satellites up in the sky before diving back down to depth. According to the research notes, when the satellite enters the attackable range, the laser weapon is raised. After the attack is completed, the submarine can submerge and wait for the next mission or return to the home port. The Chinese claim that a laser would be far more lethal than current anti-satellite weapons, which use ground-fired rockets to launch a missile that destroys its target with an explosive warhead. Satellite swarms have today become a crucial part of warfare. Through satellite swans, Ukraine has been able to provide connectivity for its forces when existing internet and satellite communications facilities were destroyed. Thus, the Chinese believe that there is a need for destroying or disabling many small satellites in low Earth orbit. China believes the solution to attacking swarm satellites are flotillas of mass-produced laser subs that could be dispatched to oceans around the world. Laser subs could also shield China's ballistic missile submarines from detection. The article reads that he escorting submarine can first use the laser weapon to interfere with or destroy overhead satellites in the sea area, making it difficult for the enemy's space-based surveillance system to function thereby achieving the concealment of missile launches. However, experts have claimed that supercavitation using lasers wasn't possible even for missiles, and submarines were still far from using such technology. Experts are also skeptical that the output claimed for the propeller is way larger than the energy put into the laser that powers it. Even with the high efficiency and advancement of lasers, this approach would never be as efficient as a propeller, so there is no net propulsive gain. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.